Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Return is finally here. So this is a brand new comic book series written by Amy Jo Johnson and Matt Hodson. And the premise of this series is that it's an alternate universe where the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers defeated Lord Zed and Rita Repulsa. But because of some events that went down during that big battle, the team decided to go their separate ways as they promised to never become Power Rangers again. But 22 years later, they'll have to find an old friend and morph once again. Now, there was a prelude for this series back in August 2023 that was in the MMPR 30th Anniversary comic, and they don't show those preview pages here. So if you want to check out that prelude, you'll probably have to wait for the trade back or go buy a digital copy or try and track down a physical copy of MMPR 30th Anniversary uh, comic. It's definitely a good insight, the sort of tease of what's going to happen in this book coming up, because that does show what happened to the Rangers leading up to the Big Battle of the Moon. But yeah, if you don't see it here, then we'll probably get it in possibly the Tradeback collection when that releases at the end of the year. So without any further ado, let's jump into the comic because there is a lot to go over with this first issue. So the series opens up with an exterior shot outside of the ruins of the command center and then we quickly go inside of it and we've got Jason in there and Jason is getting knocked around. He then takes out his blade blaster and fires into the darkness but his attack doesn't work and he's hit by several blasts of energy. He's knocked back and then he's confronted by this mysterious cloaked figure. Now we have no idea who this cloaked figure is. Some people think it's Rita, some people think it's Rita's child. Maybe in this timeline they had a daughter Water, and they didn't have fracks and I've seen one crackpot theory where people think it's Trini gone evil but that Trini theory doesn't have a lot of substance to it right now so I have no idea who this cloaked figure is but they're able to remove Jason's morpher from the buckler along with the power coin taking it from him and this mysterious person calls himself the past coming back to haunt them they are the future. So right away we're setting up the mystery and some conflict with whoever this villain is that is hunting down Jason and supposedly killing him because we don't hear from Jason at all in this issue. So whoever this villain is in the mysterious cloak, it does have my attention with who it might be. Then after that we get a bit of a time jump and we're at Angel Grove and we have Billy giving a speech for the Memorial of Trini and here we have him opening the Trini Quan Memorial Park and Youth Center and Billy is giving this speech we get some insight on what kind of life that Trini lived in this universe we find out that she was the United Nations High Commissioner of Human Rights and also became the mayor of Angel Grove at one point but not only that she was the longest serving mayor and as Billy is making this speech we do get to see some some classic MMPR characters much much older. We get to see an older Ernie, a much older Balkan Skull and they're kind of weird to see because they still dress the same they did in their teenage years. These guys are probably pushing onto their 40s and it doesn't look like much has changed with them. Uh, Bulk is a goatee now. Uh, Skull is still rocking that spiked collar. So I do wonder if we'll see more of them in this comic book series to see if they have changed because in this universe they probably never had their big countdown to destruction moment so I do wonder what kind of character regression they might have had if they probably just stayed sort of like the bullies or the antagonists to the rangers in this universe so it's a bit weird seeing them still in that punk outfit in like probably modern day especially um skull wearing the spike color in public it probably pushing on their 40s but i do wonder if we'll see more of bulk and skull in this comic as the series goes on Zachman gives his speech, but as he goes to give it, the crowd starts chanting his name and acknowledges him as the Black Ranger. Now this moment I was taken back by because one of the big rules in Power Rangers was to never reveal your identity, and that does get explained later, and I might as well go over it now. So, apparently to keep everyone's identity a secret, Zack was the one who came forth as the Black Ranger, but he would have a story where he said that the other MMPR Rangers he worked with were all over from the world. So, this part was a little bit confusing because in the 30 plus years of Power Rangers, the MMPR Rangers have been able to live normal lives without attention being brought to their identities with people trying to figure out who they are. So I do wonder what the reason in this story is, why Zack had to come forth and reveal that he was the Black Ranger here because even in Cosmic Fury, I mean that's season 30 and we've got Billy in there and Billy was able to live a peaceful life without anyone trying to discover his identity. He even opened his tech company and all those years later, no one caught on to him being the Mighty Morphin Blue Ranger. So 
like I said, I do wonder what the situation was here that made Zack and everyone else agree to have this idea where Zack would reveal his identity to everyone. But uh, it's more nitpick, but hey, it's an interesting concept. So during Zack's speech at the memorial, Kimberly wanders off and looks at all these photos of her and Trini, having some flashbacks of when they were young at the youth centre. And here I gotta point out, the artwork done by Nico Leon is fantastic here. It's great. Nico's artwork in this first issue is really freaking good and I can't wait to see what they're gonna do next. So Kimberly soon finds herself at the graveyard and she's paying some respects to someone. Who that someone is, is later to be revealed Tommy Oliver. Now we don't know why Tommy Oliver is dead in this universe, but it's teased and hinted at that he sacrificed himself during the final battle on the moon and will probably dive into more of that as the series continues. We then have Zack finding Kimberly at the tombstone and suggests that they all catch up and have some pie. And here we find out that Kimberly changed her name to Emma. Emily Phillips, which is something that was teased in the prelude, but this dinner scene, it goes from 0 to 100 really quick with the tension. So first, everyone is laughing and having a good time as they remember Trini, but then Zack says that he wishes that the people could have known that Trini was a Power Ranger, and how she saved the world hundreds of times, but Kimberly's against it and says no more tell all stories, which leads to what I mentioned earlier about Zack being the first one that revealed his identity as a ranger. But Kimberly brings up that if his story changes in the slightest, it probably won't take long for others to figure out that all five of them were rangers and they all went to the same school together. But Zack questions what could be so bad about it? It could give Billy's company a boost and Kimberly's move to Canada under a different name. So what does she have to lose? And this is what upsets Kimberly as she says that she has nothing to lose and tells Zack that he can't make the decision that will affect all of them and he needs to move on. And on the next panel I love because you've got Zack responding with this smug smile on his face, this big shit and grin and tells Kimberly that maybe she's the one that needs to move on and she just responds with a death stare. Billy tries to ease the tension by having this scene where he explains to Kimberly and the audience of what they've been doing for these past couple of years and we learn about what the Rangers' lives have been as they have entered adulthood and we get some really cool information here. So first up is Zach and we find out that Zach does this charity event, this hip hop keto festival with clean energy and it looks really freaking cool with the panels we get here because you got the mastodon up on stage and it's shooting confetti and then the stage is shaped like the MMPR suit diamonds. The artwork here for the stage show is really really freaking amazing. And then we learn about what Billy's been doing because Billy's got his own telecom company now but he says that, that telecom company is being used to fund his secret project and here we get to see Billy's lab on what he's working on and he says that he managed the salvage Alpha 5's data banks and operating system and he's been combining it into old ranger tech to make safe teleportation and I really like that idea here because Billy says imagine a world where you can have safe teleportation where you can teleport food to people in need, teleport people out of natural disasters or even teleport diseased cells out of sick people and one thing I also really do like about Billy's lab is we have all this cool MMPR stuff in there, like a little triceratops, a MMPR coffee mug with the Power Rangers lightning bolt on there. But one thing I really do like, and that did tug at the heartstrings, and that is, you see how Alpha 5's head there, and it's on this little um, pillar, but beside it has got a white rose. And I just really like that little tribute that he made to Alpha 5 that he's got in his lab. So learning about the power coins being used here, Kimberly's upset about this because they agreed to never morph again. But Billy's quick to defend his actions because he says, hey, I'm not morphing, I'm just using the power coin to help with my research. And Zach does the same thing here with his festival, throwing him right under the bus. So Kimberly does say, I wonder what Jason would say if he found out what you're doing here with the power coins. And this brings up one of the main topics as we find out what happened to Jason after all these years. So we actually get some big backstory on why Jason became this big vigilante. So here we get this very grim backstory for Jason. So Jason became a firefighter and a few years ago there was this arson and a lot of people died and Jason wasn't able to move on for it because he felt responsible because he had the power to help people and he wasn't able to use it. And we have this scene where you see Jason taught up about it and it is brutal because you see him screaming and crying as he holds onto the fire truck or the um ambulance and behind him you see the burning building of what's left of it and 
right next to him, you see these body bags being pushed out on a stretcher, those being the people that he was unable to save, and it is brutal. So, Jason started using his powers to save people, but then saving people turned into fighting crime, and then after fighting crime, you move up and you fight terrorism and tanks. That's right, there is this one panel where you have Jason taking his power sword through a fucking tank, and I love it. But, Jason went rogue and told Billy to stop using the Morphin Grid and drawing power from it because he wanted to use all that power for himself so that way he can stay morphed forever. Now, Jason's new cosmetics to his Red Ranger suit has been mixed opinions online. Personally, I like it because now we've got some context about it because he always wanted to stay morphed so he probably needs all those pouches. Now, one thing to note is that the Morpher and the Hogster for the Blade Blaster has been replaced. It's no longer that white belt. It's now made out of what it appears to be leather so it looks like he's handcrafted a belt uh, for his morpher and for his holster for his blade blaster. So this is where we find out that Jason's gone missing and the others need to become rangers once again to find him and bring him home and they say that they need Kimberly's help but she declined saying that she'll never become a ranger again and now we have no idea what happened 22 years ago but I'm guessing because of the death of Tommy Kimberly probably wanted the others to stop being rangers because of what path it had taken them and the loss and the destruction it brought along the way so yeah you've got the scene where like Zack chastised Kim for like turning her back on her friends when they needed the most and how she went cold turkey and stopped talking to him. It's a really deep scene where Zack is just going off at Kim for the choices she's made because she said let's never morph again and then after that she like literally went off the grid and cut everyone off from her lives. So yeah there's that. So yeah Kimberly goes back to Canada and she goes to live her normal life, and while she's looking at this old photo of her and Trini, she gets a knock at the door. She then opens it, and we're introduced to someone called Selena. Now, Selena says that Trini was her mum's cousin. Selena then reveals that she's looking for Kimberly, and although Kimberly says that she's got the wrong person, Selena knows exactly who she is and holds up an old photo of Kimberly and Trini morphed, along with the saber-toothed tiger morpher, saying that Kimberly is going to help her become the next Power Ranger. And that's where the issue ends. So yeah, that was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Return Issue 1, and I really, really enjoyed it, more than I expected. I like what Amy and Matt are setting up here, and I can't wait to see where it's going to go next. Not only that, the artwork is really freaking amazing, but I am interested to see where this miniseries will go, and where it's going to end up on. So, what are your thoughts on this brand new series? Tell me your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel, don't forget to leave a like and share this video around on social media and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, take care, bye.